Good young Tiff. The opening line of A Tale of Two Cities comes to mind as I reflect upon this past year. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. We never expected how coronavirus would upset our lives so dramatically, and at the same time, how many silver linings would come from it. It's remarkable how often we walk the line between the best and the worst. It is particularly true in Jewish experiences. We celebrate the good things, such as holidays and life cycle moments, summer camp and trips to Israel, while also having to fight the challenges of hate and anti-Semitism simply because we are Jews. Jews only make up 2% of the U.S. population, but account for 50% of the victims of all hate crimes. Let that sink in for a minute. According to the ADL, 2020 was the third highest year on record of anti-Semitic instances. I am thankful I've only experienced very little anti-Semitism in my life. My first experience was in middle school, when kids taunted me by throwing coins on the ground and challenged me to pick them up. Later in life, my son had surgery to remove a dermoid cyst growing on his skull. A colleague asked, was that left over from the horns that your family used to have? It was a sincere question on his part, assuming this was an undisputed fact of our Jewish past. These are relatively benign instances, unlike so many of the recent attacks on Jews or the Holocaust. But the truth is, with anti-Semitism at any level, an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. Now there is a new kind of anti-Semitism, in disguise as anti-Zionism, where the criticism of the state of Israel has become a form of discrimination against Jews. Different from debating government policy, calling Israel an apartheid state, advocating for BDS, and holding Israel to a different standard than other countries, aim at discrediting Israel's even right to exist. These claims are as prejudiced as thinking my family once had horns. There were many conversations in my life where I was lucky to be able to get by with limited knowledge of the history of Israel and conflicts in the region. I wish I could go back in time to those conversations, but with the knowledge I have today after years of studying the subject, I would have been more prepared. I would have made better arguments and I would have had the chance to change someone's opinion. And so, I'd like to take you on a journey of education with me this year. The first step is to learn Israel's story for those who need to learn it and for those who may need a refresher. Noah Tishby, the Israel actress and activist, recently wrote an important book called Israel, A Simple Guide to the Most Misunderstood Country on Earth. It is straightforward and easy to read and not terribly political. It challenges the talking points on opposing sides and explains them with facts and history. I'd like you to read this book with me. I'll send you a link where you can purchase this book at a discount and Temple will be gifting it to all of our college students so they are better prepared to tackle this issue on campus where anti-Semitism is the most prevalent. Israel education is and will continue to be implemented in our religious school curriculum and adult education classes. We intend to follow up with book clubs, classes, resources, and speakers, including Noah Tishby herself and others who will speak from diverse and supportive perspectives. It is time for our community to step up. We must do this for ourselves, for our children, and for the very future of Judaism. I know I share this passion with so many of you, including my wife's grandparents who are Israeli and who survived the Holocaust. I've learned so much from them, and now I'm excited to announce their generous donation that has allowed us to create the Miriam and Dr. Isaac Barr Israel Education Fund to sponsor our journey. I am thankful I've only experienced minor anti-Semitism in my life and I'm committed to ensuring that our children 
will never even know that. Please join me on this journey to ensure that Judaism in every generation is always the best of times. Gamar Hatima Tova. May we all be sealed in the goodness in the book of life. Welcome and good yontiv. At this time we gather, we say, uh, God, we trust in your goodness. Ani vatachti. Vaani bechastecha vatachti. Kelly be Beshuatecha Bani Bechastecha Batakti Kelly be Beshuatecha Bani Bechastecha Batakti Kelly be So we have arrived at the end of the day, and this has been an awesome day. 
awesome because it is magnificent out here in our tent, in our pavilion. Awesome because the day has been filled with awe, prayer, family, community, being back here in this sacred space. And in these moments of awe, sometimes we look for signs and symbols that things have worked the way we want them to work, that we can touch and feel and remember. And that's what we're doing here during our memorial service. For those of you who are in our pavilion and not at home, you may have seen a little bit of a, a bustle of activity before the service began with the clergy in the corner over here. Just before our service, from the tree over there, a praying mantis flew in and landed. And on the one hand, on Rabbi Loss's folder right now is a praying mantis. And the reason I mention it is, yes, it is awesome. It is awesome to feel and see nature. And it is fun to think that a praying mantis joined us for prayer. But it is also a serious moment, a moment where we bring all of the energy together in the universe. And perhaps that's what's happening now. And so here we are at this hour of Ni'ila, a time of reflection on the state of our souls. This is also the hour of Yizkor, of memory. And so as the gates of repentance are closing, we bring to mind all of our loved ones, those whose souls now reside with God, but whose memories abide with us forever. We continue now with Psalm 23.
guardians, the keepers of their memory. Our task is immense, our hearts are broken and heavy. We never forget. We are the guardians, their smiles, their goodness, their love, their countenance remain. Our love and loss assail us. But how much more pain had we not loved? Had our lives not been blessed by their presence, whether short or long? We are the guardians, the transmitters of their memory to future generations. We carry them gently in our hearts, for in our hearts they continue to be. They become a precious part of us. We never forget. We rise together as we continue on the bottom of page seven. Our Father, our King, our Mother, our Creator, be gracious and answer us, for we have little merit. Treat us generously and with kindness and be our help. to treasure the time that we have and to use it well, counting each moment precious, a chance to apprehend some truth, to experience some beauty, to conquer some evil, to relieve some suffering, to love and be loved, to achieve something of lasting worth. Remember us unto life, O sovereign who delights in life, and inscribe us in the book of life, O God of life.
Mashiach ma gain Adonai Magen Avraham Bezrahat Sarah In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of the buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. Having nothing to do one afternoon, I googled my name. And I will state it for a reason, Rabbi Harold Loss. What came up surprised me. The name of Rabbi Harold Kushner, the author of When Bad Things Happen to Good People, thus Loss. Thank you. I was a bit nervous about that. <laughs> What's important about this coincidence, it was at that moment that I discovered what he had written that I'm going to share with you as the perfect, I believe, introduction to this moment of Yisker Reflections. He wrote, at some time of the darkest moments in my life, some people I thought of as friends deserted me some because they cared about me and it hurt them to see me in pain. Others because it reminded them of their own vulnerability and that was more than they could handle. But real friends overcame their discomfort and came to sit with me. They had not words to make me feel better. They sat in silence much better than saying, you'll get over it, or it's not so bad. Others have it worse, and I love them for it. Since our last Yisker service on Yom Kippur, many in our community have mourned in ways that they could not have imagined. We have missed having family and friends by our side to comfort us, to sit with us, or simply in silence to hold our hands. During these last few months, I have been performing unveilings for funerals that I was not there as the rabbi. One family speaking of the heartbreak of their mother and grandmother's death. She had died alone in the hospital. Their last conversation, a FaceTime moment, provided only because in her room there was a caring nurse. As we unveiled the marker on her grave, this family was finally able to mourn together. So many of us believed that this high holidays we would be gathering in the sanctuary that is behind me. We have placed a time limit on the impact of a virus and truly assumed by now we would have all returned to normal. We had not factored in a variant and now recognize that we are in the process of creating a constantly evolving new normal. It is wonderful and somewhat miraculous tonight. 
I'm standing on this bima and looking at a congregation under our tent, a tent that has been filled all day long with services from the youngest of our congregants to those who have a bit more years. Remember last year, this is a miracle. Yet I understand most of you right now in your homes, there are many, many who are now able to be with family and friends. Others I know are still sitting alone. I want you to know we feel your presence in our moment of prayer. Know that we are with you and we are here for you. Please keep in touch with your temple family. When I announced several years ago that I would be establishing a new idea, a new position called senior status. I had no idea that these years would be so incredibly complicated. Every decision during this past year and a half impacted by a virus. And let's not forget the miracle of science. Like many of you here today, once vaccinated, my new comfort level enabled me to return to active, if limited, community life and service to our congregation. It might be very difficult to understand, but for a rabbi guiding a family through a funeral, although at times it is the most painful of moments, it is always a deeply meaningful, meaningful experience I have stood with you by the grave of a child as parents, grandparents, and siblings have said farewell. I have been with an adult child as they shed a tear over the loss of an elderly parent. Each death carries its own message and has its own weight. But we can ask, is there anything they have in common? Knowing what I want for those I love. I continue to believe that those who have gone before us, cared about us, would want us to find joy, would want us to continue the search for happiness, would want us to believe that we will find meaning again in our lives. And I ask you to consider, is this not precisely what we will want for those we leave behind? when our time on this earth has ended. Many of you, I'm sure, like me and my family, lit your side candles before Yom Kippur. We lit these candles for family members. And as we lit each candle, we remembered the story. We told the story. A professor and a friend, Rabbi Norman Mersky, suggested that with the passage of our years, our story is represented most clearly in the gathering of holy lights often on a kitchen table, a candle for a grandparent. You remember her with love. That bubby could always make you smile. A candle for a parent who taught you to be true to yourself, discover your own path to life, and that message is always going to be with you in your heart. It was a message given with love. A candle for a child who is often remembered with a tear, at times recalled with a smile as happy moments are recalled. A candle for a life's partner who only wanted the best for you since the moment you stood together under the chuppah. This has been a year for all of us when death has taken center stage. On this evening of Yiskor, we add to our personal Yortzeit list the over 655,000 Americans who have been taken from us by COVID, the 4.6 million who have died around the world. We feel the presence on this evening of those whose lives have been lost in storms, in fires, whose lives have been lost in wars. 
We remember those whose years upon this earth were cut short by anger and rage, murdered by a bullet in the night. We honor and we remember those who in caring for others have lost their lives in hospitals, on city streets, while lifting a child to safety at the conclusion of a war. This has been for all of us a painful year, filled with moments of joy, but a painful year when death has taken center stage. We gather at this moment of Yiskor, each one of us with our own personal and private list. We remember now those we loved who have died in years past as well as in this year. We pray, may their memory inspire us to live meaningful and productive lives. May their memory be with us carried as a badge of honor in our hearts always with us in moments of joy and in moments of sadness. Their light will be with us as seen in those Yortzeit candles, those candles in a cup that burn for 24 hours. Their memory will be with us in the Yortzeit memory. And I would hope for all of us reflected in the beauty of the stars above. stars up above so far away we only see their light long long after the star itself is gone and so it is with people that we loved their memories keep shining ever brightly though their time with us is done but the stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us as we live our days. These are the ways we remember, we remember as we live
Judaism, a person's name contains the essence of his or her soul. And the goal of a Jewish life is to create a Shem Tov, a good name. At this sacred hour, we pause for a moment of silent prayer as we meditate on the names of those who have died in this past year, 5,781. We recall, too, those who have been taken from us but recently during these past days of repentance. Philip Benison, Gloria Cohen, Laura Cole, Audrey Friedman, Benoit Gorge, Philip Horowitz, Margaret Ruth Katz, Marcy Clyde Dickinson, Terry Lifton, Daniel Elliott Schindler, and Barbara Stolman. As you concentrate on the names, meditate on the names, say the names silently to yourself. Take this moment to bring the names of your own beloved departed into your consciousness. Recall his features, her face, his wisdom, her voice. Use God's sacred gift of memory and let them be here with you now as we recall their names and remember them with love. We take this moment for silent East Corps. rise for the memorial prayer. Thank 
eternal spirit of the universe. Grant perfect rest under your sheltering presence to our loved ones who have entered eternity. O God of mercy, let them find refuge forever in the shadow of your wings, and let their souls be bound up in the bond of eternal life. God is their inheritance. May they rest in peace. And we say together, Amen. Someone asked me about you today. It's been so long since somebody has done that. It felt so good to talk about you, to share my memories of you, to simply say your name out loud. She asked me if I minded talking about what happened to you, or would it be too painful to speak of it? I told her I think of it every day, and speaking about it helps me release the tormented thoughts whirling in my head. She said she never realized the pain would last this long. She apologized for not asking sooner. I told her, thanks for asking. I don't know if it was curiosity or concern that made her ask, but I told her, please do it again sometime, sometime soon. It does feel good when people ask about our loved ones, when we can tell the stories and speak their names and share why we love them. I think it also feels good and comforting to know that there is something that we can do for their souls, and that's saying Kaddish. And so we do that now for those that we loved. It gadal vid kadash sheme raba be alma divra hirute viam lich malchute be chayechon uviomechon uchaye de hobe Israel be agala uvisman kari vimru amen. Yehesh me raba mivorach le olam le olme olmaya. Yit barach vish tabach vid paar vit roman vit nase. Vit hadar vit ale vit halal shemei de kudusha brichu le ela min kol birchata veshirata tush bechata venechemata de amiran bealma veimru amen yehe shlama raba min shemaya vechayim alenu veal kol israel veimru amen o se shalom bimramav hu ya ase shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'imru, amen. We pray that the source of peace sends peace to all who mourn and comfort to each of you as we say together, amen. I love this time of the service and the day of Yom Kippur especially outdoors, which is just we've never done before, but you can feel, you can actually feel the light changing. You can feel the breeze coming through. And not having eaten or had anything to drink for 24 hours, if you squint your eyes, you can actually see the gates of righteousness closing. <laughs> but according to tradition, the gates don't shut fast until the end of Sukkot. 
until Shemini Atzeret. And so we are going to conclude our service by praying that God will keep the opportunity for repentance, for improvement, open for just a little while longer with this beautiful acrostic which goes from A to Z. O God, open the gates of heaven so that healing, comfort, understanding, and peace might rain down upon us. Open the gates of righteousness, and we shall enter and be glad. Open the gates, open them wide, the gates of atonement, benevolence, and compassion, the gates of dignity, excellence, and faith, generosity and hope, insight and joy, kindness and love, melody and nobility, openness, purity and quietude, renewal, simplicity and truth, the gates of understanding and virtue, the gates of wonder and zest for life. Open the gates, O God. Show us the way to enter as we rise. Well, we're already risen, but as we open the ark. Susharim Rashech Vehina Supite Olam Beyavo Meler Hakavod Susharim Rashech Vehina Supite Olam Beyavo Meler Hakavod longer, I promise. I would like to call upon Molly Weisberg, who will be concluding our service with the blowing of the shofar, heralding in this new year, this new, hopefully, sweeter, sweeter year. And your part here is just to say amen. You'll know when. And now, at the close of this day's service, we implore you, our Father, our King, our Mother, our Creator, let the year upon which we have entered be for us, for Israel and for all the world, a year of blessing and prosperity. Amen. A year of salvation and comfort. Amen. A year of peace and contentment, of joy and spiritual welfare. Amen. A year of virtue and of reverence for God a year that finds the hearts of the parents united with the hearts of the children, Amen. a year of forgiveness and of love. Amen. Amen. Yanu ame ha ha ve ha ta mar 